Joe Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today we are looking at the Deluxe G.I. Joe Snow Job from the Classified Series. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this considering I just opened up the Snow Serpent the other day. And I'm going to do something that I don't often do just because this one's still on the workbench is we're going to do a little comparison. In general, I don't care that much about parts reuse like unless it's blatant and I'm like oh look this is just a repaint of this other figure uh, I think it's a clever way to extend a line I, I think I mean Masters of the Universe obviously are the kings of that but the classified team has done a fantastic job as well so uh, yeah I'm gonna take I'm gonna compare the two so snow job here looking at the box art that's kind of a made-up looking vehicle because the two rocket well no because look it's got two rockets or missiles or whatever up here one over here presumably one over here the, so it looks similar to several vehicles but i believe it's something completely new uh and i would be curious to see uh and let me know in the comments what you guys think what if they offered up a haslab of this just some completely unique new vehicle that looks pretty awesome but that we don't have nostalgic ties to. How would you guys feel about that? We might talk about that on the show a little bit too. Uh, and by the show, I mean Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts and here live on the channel every other Monday. Our next episode is on the 25th. So anyway, that's the box. We've seen the box plenty of times, or the box style plenty of times. Let's open it up and get to the figure inside. I, I grew up in Georgia, uh, so I did not often get to play with my Joes in the snow, but I loved Arctic theme. I mean, I loved most of the environmentally uh, environmental specialists, I guess. Uh, the aquatics were my favorite, but I loved the Arctic themed stuff as well. Uh, so it looks like Snow Job has the same shape locker as uh, the Snow Serpent which is really means absolutely nothing. Uh, and then there is Snow Job, man. He looks good and he's got that same thickness, obviously, because I think they're sharing a lot of parts, which is fine. Uh, got that same thickness that the Snow Serpent had that I really, really appreciate in somebody who's bundled up for the uh, cold weather. That's something that in, in the early renders, you maybe just don't quite notice something like that as much uh, as you do once you've got it in person. Uh, there's that great grayscale artwork. Set that over to the put that in my pile, or it can slide off onto the floor. Or whatever, we'll worry about that later. Hmm, I find the hood design interesting. Feels pretty good. All the plastic feels pretty solid. And elbows and knees match very nicely. Well, let's go ahead. Okay, so he's got the same thigh holster that the Snow Serpent had. Uh, let's go ahead and compare these two. So everything... Uh, the legs are the same, the arms, well, okay, the biceps are the same, the arms clearly are not, and this is a full, like, piece, this isn't just a slip-over type of thing. So, some common parts, but not as much as you might have thought. And with the paint job, because you can see, well, hopefully you can see, I know video doesn't always show it as well. Uh, Snow Job is, his base color is a more pure white, whereas the Snow Serpent is a little, well, the Snow Serpent kind of matches the paint on Snow Job, that light, light, light gray. So there you go. They both look like Arctic weather specialists, but 
or Arctic climate specialist, whatever. Uh, but really are not that similar. And this is the magic of classified is I just don't even think about that stuff all that often because they do such a good job with it. Uh, okay. So he's got that great bulk. Oh, okay. So this is great. They did a fantastic job with this waist piece. So let's check this out. I, I've been, even though I've held this, I kind of thought that this was all one piece. It is not. Uh, so you have that waist ball joint. You've got the abdominal ball joint, which is mostly covered by his web gear. There's some really clever construction here that I really dig a lot. Um, so he's got a standard crotch piece and this just sits on top of it. Man, that's really well done. I really, really like that. Uh, great range. That is some... So think about this. For a thick, cold weather guy... The range on this figure is amazing because if you if you were collecting in the modern era, you know that was all just one big piece of rubber. But here we actually have very, very well disguised segmented pieces that allow for a, a ton of range of motion. Very well done. Uh, everything else is kind of standard articulation, what we've come to expect. Like I said, the plastic feels good. Uh, front elbow joint is always a little bit of a challenge. Oh no, that's interesting too. I didn't notice that. Uh, there's a swivel or what is supposed to be a swivel right here. Ah, that you know what? I bet it is. Okay. So the snow serpent has the same piece down to here. And that's where his his furry wrist part plugs in. So good engineering. They were able to use that much of the same arm. And actually, that is not a swivel, as I said. It's just a seam, which is fine. I mean, I, that doesn't bother me at all. It's visible, but whatever. Just be careful, when because you can see it kind of wants to pop off a little bit right there. So there, you, there we go. All right, we're fine. Uh, knees, knees work actually a little bit better. I think the thickness um, helps make those a little easier to sort of open up. And then he's got the same great ankles as the Snow Serpent. So yeah, Snow Job looks great. Now let's get this hood off of him. The hood is soft plastic. And it kind of plugs in around his neck. I'm going to assume there's another piece uh, that goes here for when you don't have the hood on. And his portrait, man, he looks great. He he does kind of look like he's been fighting Cobra for 40 years, though. Like, dude looks a little... Let me try and get my light in a little better spot so we can see him better. There we go. That's better. The wind burn, a little bit of a loose neck, but that doesn't really bother me because it stays where you put it. It's not literally just wobbling around. Um, so that's fine. Uh, the wind burn paint on his cheeks is absolutely there, but is not as noticeable as it was in like the renders and online photos that we saw. I'd like the brown gear because it just breaks it up a little bit. So here, here's here's what we've got. Here's our original snow job. And you can see he's got brown. Uh, his web gear and then up here where his backpack connects or his backpack straps are. Uh, that's brown. They've just gone with a lighter brown here, which I actually like. If it was a darker brown, I don't think it would look as good. Uh, so... Snow job, definitely one of the more modernized Joe figures, but I think we're going to get to the accessories a bit and, and sort of check that out. But as far as just being recognizable as snow job, absolutely. 
Uh, so yeah, the, the hood is very, very soft plastic. Uh, you've got paint on the fur, little gray highlighting to match the rest of his gear. And this part kind of just plugs into his collar. Let's put that back on for now. And it, I mean, it looks great for posing his head. You're going to have to sort of replug it in every time. But I think they engineered this about as well as they possibly could have because I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want this to be a separate piece attached to a head that like moved around. Like I, I think they figured out a pretty good solution for how to handle this sculpt wise. So let's take a look at the accessories now and see what all this deluxe figure comes with. Uh, I got two bags, just like the Snow Serpent did. I'm going to set that aside. Get rid of our little piece of legal paper. And carefully open whatever fragile element this is. Skis. Oh, I'm a little surprised the skis aren't wrapped uh, in cardboard. They seem to be pretty straight. And I think they actually chose the right kind of plastic. Uh, it's not rigid, but it's also, it's not rubber. So they have some give, but they retain their shape. These are both out of the box. Um, perfectly flat. So good job on that. I do, it's another one of those things, a lot of times it's something I sort of notice and have a preference, but I don't care that much. I kind of wish they were white. Uh, no, I definitely wish they were white, but also it's fine that they're black. How, how's that? It, it's a lot of times I feel the need to express a preference, but also acknowledge that what they did isn't bad. It's just preference. Okay, everything's out of that bag, and you can see his rifle here uh, is in that cardboard to preserve the shape of it. And I'm curious to see what kind of plastic it's... Come on now. Uh, it is made of. I hope it is not rubber. Mm, it's not rubbery, but... It's okay. It's okay. So what's surprising to me, there are a few things surprising to me that we're looking at here. Well, the ski poles uh, were not in any kind of protective thing. Uh, they're pretty much the same kind of plastic as the skis, uh, and they need to have a little bit of give, but you can see one of them. This one is just a little bent, but not significantly. Uh, and they do... We'll go ahead and start taking a closer look at stuff here. So let's look at the skis first. Uh, you can see just black. I don't mind this being on the bottom. That's not a big deal to me. I don't need that to be filled in or anything. Uh, and then you've got the brown detailing for the clamps or whatever. I don't know ski terminology. I've literally never been skiing or anywhere where skiing would even be possible in my entire life. So I know nothing about skis, aside from that one goofy cartoon where uh, the instructional cartoon about learning to ski, which is on Disney Plus, and I highly recommend everybody go watch it. Skiing, also pronounced sheing, which I don't even know if that's true, but what a weird thing to say if it's not. Uh, okay, so the skis fit on very well. They stay on. Perfectly flat, look great. And with his boots being black, and I don't know that I'd want his boots to be white. Maybe black was the right call on the skis. I don't know. I think white would look cool, but maybe this actually, with the design of this figure, is the way to go. Okay. Uh, ski poles. Got paint on them. Look at that paint. Paint on the ski poles. Not something we could just take for granted. But there it is. Looks good. It's got the little loop. On the one hand, I kind of wish the loop could go around his wrist. But on the other hand, well, then what 
would it look like? Because if it's rigid enough plastic, because this is relatively rigid pl plastic, um, then would it just be sticking out? Like it, it, it would be a problem if this was big enough to accommodate his wrist. Uh, cause you're not going to make it a completely different soft rubber piece. So I think they went with probably the best solution for what could be done at this scale for this price point. Uh, so ski poles, we'll go ahead and throw the ski poles in his hands. Why not? Sheen. All right. I'm not going to bother putting those all the way down there. We know one of the things that really just barely even needs to be verified with classified series is how the figure is going to interact with the accessories. I, I cannot remember a time. I think there might have been one gun that wasn't great. And and I do uh I did have a complaint recently about the wrist articulation on one of the figures. Uh, I think the Televiper being this instead of this because he couldn't hold his microwave scanner quite right. So there you go. There is snow job just average everyday ski skier. Pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Let's put him off to the side, see what else we've got. We've got a backpack, a great looking backpack with what looks like storage for just everything. This is this is cool. This is uh it could use a little paint, but also I don't care because honestly, you there could be a backpack like this that's just all brown. Uh, the original Snow Jobs backpack is is very, very unique and different. And I'm going to consider this an upgrade over this little unit here. As clever as this was in 1984, no, three? I think he's 83. I don't always know this stuff off the top of my head. Oh, look, uh, I can't see his butt because of the skis. We're just going to say, I believe he was 83 because I think he was one of the first environmental troops we got. Um, but this, this was mind blowing back then, but I do think there was room for improvement and it looks like Hasbro's done it. Now, obviously they had the mini snow job or several snow jobs from the modern era that had even more detail than this, almost too much detail. If you ask me, uh, but this looks great and hopefully we'll plug right into his back. So this is softer plastic to accommodate everything that it needs to accommodate. I don't think he's going to stay there forever, but it does plug in fairly securely. So let's take that off and start working our way through how everything interacts with the backpack. I'm, I'm really digging this guy. This one, I'm glad, you know, I always get a little nervous because the Snow Serpent didn't thrill me as much as I wanted it to. And to be honest, the eel uh, also just, uh, I, I, it was, I was a little let down by the eel, mostly the accessories. Well, completely the accessories. Uh, so I hate it when that happens and I feel like, ugh, am I getting in a funk? where I just don't love these as much. Uh, so it's really nice. Oh, you know what? I think those unpeg. Yes. Okay, so the straps for the skis unpeg. So you can do that. Oh, that is... Gr Ooh, you know what I just noticed here? These are two separate pieces. Now, this doesn't actually come apart. Well, and that's not even a harder plastic. Interesting the way that they did that. But but regardless, uh, the pegs work very well. It's always a concern for me. If you watch my Indiana Jones review, you know how mad I got about his holster. Uh, it's always a concern for me when they use this pegging system with soft plastic. Uh, because it does not always work very well. But in this instance, they seem to have kind of nailed the perfect... Uh, composition for the pegs and for the holes. Okay, so skis go there. And then you put in your ski poles. 
This is great. This this is almost as exciting as that original snow job backpack was at the time. And I, I only say almost just because they have so many years of toy engineering to base these things on that it doesn't feel quite as innovative. But my gosh, look at that. Look how great that looks and how well everything interacts. It all, everything is snug and secure. Like this isn't haphazard at all. You know, some of that modern era stuff was, it was kind of questionable as to how well the stuff stayed on. Like if you pick the figure up, things started falling off. This is all secure. You're good to go. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, moving on, we've got an alternate portrait with the uh, balaclava. I guess that's not really a balaclava. I don't know what you call that little skull cap deal he's wearing. Uh, but this with just his hair out and wild. And it's going to be really hard for me to decide which portrait I want to display with the figure. Uh, paint is immaculate. And look at the way the beard is actually a little darker than the hair. I love that. That's a great hint of realism because how many people do you know where their beard is the exact same color as their hair? Not many. So it looks great. Uh, this is the collar for when his hood is down. And that's just going to slide right in. I guess we might as well. So you've got a couple of options for how you display that. Because you can put either of the heads on. You know what? Let's make this let's make this easier, huh? So that go oh man, that goes right into place just perfectly. And you can either have uh, the little skull cap headpiece on, uh, or you can put the other one on. But you've got the hood down and it plugs into place uh, it just popped out, but still. It's very, it's nice and secure in there. Again, really specific engineering here. I'm very, very impressed with how these pieces interact and how snug everything is. Uh, okay. I've got some goggles. I love the polarized effect that they put on these goggles. I think that looks great. And those, now I wonder, so these are a little tiny, tiny bit big on this head. I wonder if they can fit on this head. I'm, I'm going to say probably not. Uh, I mean, they're pretty stretchy. If you, you know what, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. If you want the goggles on this head, it's going to stretch them out a little bit. And I don't know how well they're going to recover, but they do fit. I'm going to get those right off of there and let them shrink back down a little bit. Because uh, I, I don't yet know how I want to display those. And we've also got some snowshoes for snow job. It's wild to me that they have paint on them. Look at that. Got gray detail in there. And it's also wild to me, hang on. I'm just gonna bring the one out. That, that is a completely different snowshoe from the snow viper or snow serpent snowshoe. What, what? that's so weird. I'm just, I'm just, my mind is boggled because the front portion is the same. The difference is just this little tab. Sorry. The only difference in these two, well, one, the Snow Serpents has no paint on it, which is a little lame. The only difference in these two is this tab right up here at the top. That's weird got to be a reason for that. So, oh, I wonder if 
Yeah, okay, you know what? I didn't catch that in my Snow Serpent review. See, this is why you've got to watch all of the content on Needless Things. And I'm sure by this time there's already somebody in the comments who's like, you can hang the snowshoes off of his... Uh, I wonder if you can get both of them on there. Oh, man, look at that. I don't know how intentional that is, but that's pretty good. Okay, so there it is. There's... Uh, that's why the Snow Serpent snowshoes are designed differently. So everybody just pretend I said that in the Snow Serpent review. Oh man, this stupid little gun fell out. Okay. Hopefully we're done with the Snow Serpent at this point. So anyway, snow jobs, snowshoes, and these... Well, I guess I'll test them on his feet. There's really no point because they're the same feet. Uh, there, they just slide right in. Actually, they fit in, they fit a little better on him than they did on the Snow Serpent. So, there you go. And I gotta tell you, that little bit of paint on these makes all the difference in the world. Snow jobs just look better than the Snow Serpents. And then these will attach to Snow Jobs' backpack. Look at all of that gear, reasonably contained, and that one accessory. What a what a great this figure is awesome okay uh, he has got a pistol pretty cool unique looking pistol I dig this one I like that square barrel that's very interesting uh, and it does have a port for blast effects since I have them sitting right here we will throw one in and look at that great and that pistol is going to go right in the holster on his thigh. And then finally, we've got his sniper rifle, uh, which I believe is the same one that came with Zartan. I'm never quite sure how those things plug in. There we go. Uh, looks great. The paint on it is great. Please just throw a little bit of paint on all the accessories. It makes such a difference, as we just saw with those snowshoes. Uh, so this looks awesome. And this goes right in there. I want to make sure I'm getting this in here the correct way. That little peg seems to be impeding me. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that loadout. How killer is that? Whoever designed this, fantastic work. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, so, let me gear this guy. I need to heat those goggles up so they're going to actually stay on the little head. I think, uh, well, okay, I'll leave his collar down for now. Because I just want to get him geared up and, and looking cool. And that, guys, snow job. Man. Very, very, very well done G.I. Joe figure. I am thrilled with this figure. Uh, available now, I think from, I think it's a fan channel exclusive. I don't believe it's a Pulse exclusive. Or maybe it is, I'm not positive. Uh, but check it out on Pulse. If it's not available now, I'm sure it will be again before the end of the year because that's how they tend to roll. This is an awesome figure. This is this is the kind of thing that gets me really, really excited about Classified all over again. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. Oh, I forgot to mention, it is a little disappointing that he doesn't come with uh, the classic Snow Job rifle, which is like the signature rifle of all of G.I. Joe. But fortunately... I have got one from Mark II Designs that I bought at Joe Fest a couple of years ago. And I am going to put that right in his hand just so we can wrap this thing up. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about needless things, and until next time, yo Joe! Smash that like button if you like needless things.